Gikis, I have shundi. And as the Mongols say, of course, Nadzuld means Sanbat Scanol. Uh, we are back here for office hours here in Ulaanbaatar, and we have a, or rather, I have a great program for you here tonight. Um, this is here today. We're going to learn animal names in Eventi. So, uh, sorry for the screen glare on my glasses. I'm seeing it right now. By the way, if you're noticing anything different about me, check out my cool new glasses. Yes, these are my new ones. I had my old kind of uh, modern looking ones, but I thought these ones were more kind of academic and professional looking. So, this is big news in my life right now. If you're wondering where my roommate is, where um, uh, Baldong is, uh, unfortunately, she was feeling a little bit under the weather, and she had to go to the uh, doggy hospital. Um, she, she, the good news, there, there, it's good news. It's good news. They did some tests, and it's not a virus, and it's not a parasite. Uh, it's just kind of a stomach ache that she's been having, and apparently, it's bacterial. So they can treat it. It's a good thing. You know, it's it's not it's not too bad. But the bad news is. She has to stay at the vets over the weekend so they can keep an eye on her and give her the treatment she needs. But she'll be back tomorrow. So I guess that's good. Anyway, uh, I'm just relaxing here with, uh, of course, my nice, refreshing uh, bowl of attic that I've been able to buy here at the grocery store. Maybe you can see here there's Mongolian words, Shin Arak. And that means new Eric, or new fermented horse milk. And here, of course, is our uh, horse that is giving us the Eric. So, uh, anyway, I thought that I, I would share that with you. Let's move on to some Evenki. So, uh, Hulan Bear Step Evenki. And if you've been following the, the videos for the last several months, you'd know that Hulan Bear is a region in far north of Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region in People's Republic of China. And uh, the, the Evenki of this region have actually adopted a great uh, deal of Mongol cultural habits, and with them even comes some loan words. Uh, so I thought, you know, at the very beginning, we could take a look at some of these words that have come to us into Evenki through the Mongol language. And if you know classical Mongolian or even modern Mongolian, uh, you'll see that these words are quite familiar. And then especially if you know classical Mongolian with the vertical script, beautiful vertical scripts, you'll see that they, they are very clear loans, probably done in the, ever since the um, uh, movement of the Evenki into China in the last 300, 400 years. So anyway, uh, I, I thought we would start today by looking at the five important animals of the steppe nomads. <coughs> and uh, if you're if you're Mongolian, you know Taman uh, Mas, that is the the five herds, and that is the sheep. And the Mongol word for the sheep is the hong hong. And the uh, the Hulan bear of Enki word here, konin. Konin. So obviously very close similarity. In fact, Konin is the way we write it in classical Mongolian. And this is something that we'll see for the rest of the, the five herds. And uh, here we have Ukr, Ukr, and this is the word for a cow or cattle. And uh, once again, uh, borrowed from Mongolian, Ukr, Ukr. I'm afraid I don't know the, the original Evenki words for uh, these animals, but uh, hopefully um, someday I will learn uh, uh, Taiga Evenki and be able to uh, solve this mystery. Anyway, moving on. Marin, Marin, and of course this is borrowed from Mongolian word Mor, Mor, which means horse. And finally. Yamarang, I'm sorry, I, I um, velarized the final nasal sound. It should be Yamaran, Yamaran. And this is our word for goats. 
which um, is, is if you speak Mongolian, once again, we have the word Yama. Now, there is one more. You're saying, right now, you're saying, bro, you said there were five great herds. Sorry, I'm holding up. There we go, five great herds. Where's the camel? Why haven't you given us the Evenki word for camel? Well, I'm sorry, and don't shoot the messenger here, but the camel is not really represented in the far north of the um, uh, uh, Inner Mongolia, and the Evenki never really used the camel, since uh, the, that's more toward the west of uh, Mongolia and in the Gobi Desert. So we don't have a word for camel. The Mongolian word for camel, of course, is Timé, Timé. And, uh, I mean, I remember it like the, the kid from South Park, but maybe that's a little politically incorrect. Um, <laughs> if, if you're a fan, you would understand. Anyway, there's the, uh, uh, of course, Chahar uh, speakers, like the ones living in Inner Mongolia, would say Timé, Timé. But, um, uh, unfortunately, we don't have that represented in Evenki. So, let's move on. I have one more uh, uh, clear Mongolian loan word, and that is the word for deer. If you're familiar with Mongol mythology, deer is the great-grandmother. The, the, um, the doe, the maras, is the great-grandmother of all Mongolians. And so here we have the word boka, boka. Uh, which is the Hulan Bear Evenki word for deer. Now, uh, the, the Mongolian word is actually spelled the same in modern Mongolian Cyrillic, but they leave out the final A. It's kind of a silent A, so to speak. So they say bok, bok. Um, well, bok with an O sound instead of an A. Uh, but at any rate, um, you know, similar word. Excuse me. So, this is a word that I think is really interesting because it shows something, in, I believe, to be very ancient. And uh, those of us out there who are Altaicists, uh, people who believe that the Turkic, Mongolic, and Tunguzic languages on a distant level are um, genetically related, uh, would say that this is, this is coming straight to us from Proto-Altaic. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm an Altaicist, I'm a little skeptical. Uh, I would say that for thousands of years, these three language families have been so closely linked together that it's kind of hard to tell. But at any rate, here we have this word, inakin, inakin. And if you uh, speak Mongolian, especially classical Mongolian, maybe you're seeing something very ancient here, and this is sounding like the word nahai, nahai. So, what does this word mean? This word means dog. So, inakin is our Evenki word for dog and I think that this is a very this must be a very ancient word uh, to have this sort of uh, cognate in Mongolian maybe not cognate but a, a very ancient loan um, but anyway uh, you know we I guess we I would say maybe that Altaic is a sprockbund rather than an actual language family we just don't know but anyway I'm sorry Inakin here we have our word for dog this next one is really cool. I, here I have the dog. What about the cat? Right. So, we have here a Russian loan. This is the only Russian loan that I encountered. I'm sure there are more. But this is the only Russian loan that I encountered among speakers of Hulambera Venki. So, if you speak Russian, uh, you would know that the word for cat is koshka. Um, or kot if it's a boy cat. But... Um, if, and if you speak cats, uh, you would know that the word for cat is borrowed from this Russian word is kuska, kuska. Um, and evenki is the same thing. We'll take a look. Koska, koska, koska is our word for cat. Okay, so here are our really common animals, our domesticated animals that we interact with all the time. Let's move on to some, um, so, some uh, s less economically and socially important animals uh, that socially may be a little important. 
but we're not seeing loan words, at least that I can recognize, or cognates, at least that I can recognize. So, uh, let's move on to some of these uh, smaller animals. And here we have the word for a bird. A small bird is dohi, dohi, dohi. I'm sorry, I, I turned this into a fricative uh, the first time I said it, but it should be a stop. Dohi, dohi. Good. And here's our word for snake. Kajin, kajin. Moving on now to bugs, the little creepy crawlies within the earth that uh, we don't like so much, and the economically unimportant ones, of course. Umus, and this is our word for a worm. I remember <laughs> distinctly uh, getting this from my informant. Um, she, she didn't recognize my heavily accented Mongolian when I tried to say ut ut, and so I had to do this little thing to get her to recognize the word, and she gave me this for umus, umus. So this is this is our worm. Uh, these next two are actually fairly socially important because in uh, Mongolia and Siberia, uh, these two animals grow to truly monstrous proportions and become quite annoying. So the first one we have is izasen, uh, izasen. I'm sorry. Once again, I velarize the n at the end. This is uh, my fault for speaking too much Mongolian. Anyway, Izasen, Izasen. And this is a fly. And believe me, here in Mongolia, they become enormous. I think I killed one the other day that weighed five pounds. It was, it was, it was atrocious. Izasen. So, next one is, is even worse than a fly. And this is our mosquitoes. And if you've ever been to um, my professor, of course, talking about Siberia, always loves to bring up the mosquitoes. And in Mongolia, it's no picnic either. They are terrible. They will swarm around and bite you. And you, you, you. During the summer, it, it's it's just horrendous. You can't get away from them. Balkosin, balkosin. And this is our mosquito, balkosin. Ah, and this is, these last few are fairly important socially. Uh, well, maybe not, maybe not the last one, but the next two are fairly important socially. And this is Kusko, Kusko. Now, if you are uh, familiar with Mongol mythology, you would know that while the great-grandmother is the, uh, of the Mongols is the deer, uh, or the doe, that is the maraz. Uh, the great grandfather of the Mongols is the wolf, or as, as they would say in Mongolian, chony. Um, and of course, gusko, this is a somewhat unrelated word, which I guess is showing some um, different degree of perception of the wolf between Evenki and Mongol, which is kind of interesting. At any rate, next one, tamadagi. Tamadogi, tamadogi, sorry, tamadogi, and this is an eagle, this is an eagle, and uh, the Evenki, maybe um, having interacted with the cat people, uh, the, the, the eagle to the cat people is very important, and unfortunately the, the Evenki have fought with the cat people, but it would be interesting to see maybe someday what the uh, shamanic or the traditional significance of the eagle is to the Evenki people, because it must be something. This is a very majestic animal, after all. All right, last one, and this is one that maybe in traditional Mongolian uh, people you will you will not really talk about much. Uh, and this is alda, which means fish. Alda, alda, sorry, alda, which means fish. Uh, of course, the the. Inner Asian steppes are um, not uh, not not terribly uh, uh, prone to having fish in them, since there's no there's little water. And to the Mongolians, eating a fish is just kind of weird. It's, it'd be like us eating a, a some kind of weird bug or something. But um, and, and you know, it, it's changing. It's changing. There's even a sushi joint downtown here. It wasn't bad. It was shipped in, it was frozen, but it wasn't bad. Anyway, 
Uh, oh, no, this is our Evenki word, uh, and it has no similarity to the Mongolian word just because this is such an unimportant animal when we're out here in Inner Asia on the steppes. So, I've been going for 15 minutes. I'm sorry, this has been uh, uh, a little bit long time, but I'm glad that we got through our animals, and um, in our next video, maybe we can start learning personal pronouns. Uh, not, not just personal pronouns, but pronouns in general. And maybe we can even start making some sentences in a Venki. So, until next time, everybody take care. Uh, I'm afraid I don't remember the Venki word for goodbye, but Mongolian we can say Bayerte. And in Ket we can say, oh geez, what was it again? Kayadinksbandinga. Of course, Kayadinksbandinga is the cat word for goodbye or see you later. But um, I'm, I'm sorry for having forgotten this very important word. You know, sometimes uh, things seem to uh, uh, slip out of your mind and then suddenly come back. Well, it's the next morning now, and I'm very happy to tell everyone that Bobong is back. Bobong! Yeah! Yeah! Right. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, here she is, and she is feeling much better. So um, she she still has her bandage from the IV, but other than that, she is doing very well, very well. Back to her old energetic self. So anyway, everybody take care, and kaya uh, I will see you later.